Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the JG Aurora A5 3D printer from Gearbest. I asked for this printer specifically because I thought it looked pretty nice from the little bit of research that I did online, but I didn't realize how nice of a printer it actually is until it showed up. I haven't watched any other reviews on the printer, and as such I may miss some details that other people have caught, so you should probably check out some other reviews as well to get multiple perspectives before you make any decisions on whether or not to purchase this printer. With that said, this is my full unbiased opinion from my own experiences with it so far. To start, one misconception I had about this printer before it showed up was the size. From the pictures I saw online, I thought the A5 was going to be roughly the same size as other Prusa style printers. However, when I pulled it out of the box, it was clearly much larger. The print bed is 12 inches by 12 inches and the print height is about 12 and a half inches high. That means the bed is the same size as the CR10, but the print height is a little bit shorter. Easily one of my favorite things about this printer is the print surface. JG Aurora's black diamond print surface is basically a perforated black textured surface on top of a piece of glass that works perfectly for PLA and PETG filaments. While the bed is heated, the print sticks pretty solidly to it, but as soon as the bed cools down to room temperature, it comes right off with little to no effort. I've never once had to use glue stick, masking tape, or any other kinds of adhesives to get a print to stick, and I've never had to use a paint scraper or a spatula or anything to take the part off after it was done. I honestly can't say this about any other printer that I've owned, so that was a really nice surprise. In addition to this, the print bed will actually heat up to 100 degrees Celsius even though it does take a while. I don't know if I would use this printer to print ABS without modifications personally, but it's nice to know such a large bed will even get that hot. The TiVo Tornado heats up to 100 degrees much faster, but it's also using a 120 volt silicone heating pad to pull that off, or 230 volts if you're outside of the US. The CR10 on the other hand, will pretty much never reach 100 degrees without modifications. My CR10s usually take longer to reach 80 degrees than the JG Aurora takes to reach 100 degrees. Although I will be making a video about installing a silicone heater on the CR10 sometime soon. One nice perk of never having to pry prints off the bed is I've only had to level the bed once or twice so far. Since the nozzle has never crashed into the bed and I'm never putting any unnecessary pressure on the springs, the bed pretty much just stays where you leave it. I would still prefer to install some sort of auto bed leveling personally since the rest of my printers have auto bed leveling installed on them, but so far it seems kind of unnecessary. One of the bigger selling points for this printer is probably the touch screen. Personally, I'm fine with a rotary knob controlled LCD screen, but the A5's firmware does come with some nice features built in. Specifically, it has a manual bed leveling routine, which is pretty easy to use. Also, it has a filament change feature that's pretty much necessary with the meter long Bowden tube. However, there were two features that I wasn't expecting when the printer showed up. One is power failure protection, which makes sure your print doesn't fail if your power ever goes out in the middle of a print. This is a feature that should really come standard on pretty much any consumer level 3D printer, but the majority of printers in this price range just don't have this option for one reason or another. I should point out that if you don't get a chance to restart your print before the bed cools down, there's a good chance it's not going to work out. Since parts come off of the bed so easily when the bed is cold, there's no guarantee that your prints are going to stick during a long power failure, but in my opinion, that's better than nothing.
The other feature is a filament runout sensor. I will say that I didn't have much luck with testing this personally, but it did stop in the middle of the print when I cut the filament, so you could argue that it works as intended. However, there are certainly some issues that need addressing and some improvements that it would be nice to have in a printer like this. For instance, my one pet peeve for any 3D printer or home appliance for that matter is unnecessary noise pollution. For example, when you first turn the printer on, it blares at you with a welcoming one second beep. And if you ever feel like you need more of that ear shattering beep noise in your life, fear not. There is plenty more to be had if you ever run out of filament. In addition to the unnecessarily loud beeping, there is also the part cooling fan which produces a high pitched whine that makes it a little hard to be around the printer when it's printing. I will note however that changing from 100% fan speed to 80% made the printer more bearable to be around without any noticeable loss in quality. My third complaint would be the fact that there doesn't seem to be a way to manually adjust the bed or nozzle temperature from the touchscreen while the print is running. If you normally print with something like Octoprint or Repetier Host, this isn't really a problem anyway since they both give you a way to manually change settings at print time, but if you prefer to print straight from a USB drive, that would be a nice feature to have. However, I did find an existing version of the Marlin firmware for the A5 that could probably be modified to add those options or to remove the obnoxious beeping if you're not a fan of unnecessary loud noises, or even if you want to add auto bed leveling. To list a couple of other notable things about this printer, in comparison to the CR10 and TiVo Tornado, the JG Aurora A5 does come with dual Z-axis stepper motors by default, which helps keep your X-axis stable without the need for much manual adjustment. Instead of an SD card reader, there's a USB port so you can move a USB drive back and forth between your computer and your printer if you prefer to print that way. The touchscreen menu also has access to a Wi-Fi setting that I haven't quite figured out how to use yet and there doesn't seem to be much information about it online, but that would be a pretty nice feature to have once I get it worked out. Also, this is just my personal opinion, but the printer just looks pretty cool in general. I know a lot of us sacrifice some level of style in the interest of keeping a 3D printer in the house, but I can easily say this printer is much more modern and cool to look at than a lot of the other lower priced eyesores that are on the market. I should also mention that i found since the print bed is the same size as the CR10, I've been able to use my CR10 profile for printing on the A5 with pretty good luck. Anyway, that's about the extent of my experience with the JG Aurora A5 so far. To me, it seems like a really nice printer with a lot of cool features that can give you some extra print size if you're used to working with smaller printers, as long as you don't mind a little bit of extra noise in your life. I would like to point out that this printer was sent to me by Gearbest, and I'm not being paid to review it. If any of you are interested in picking up the JG Aurora A5 and you want to help support the channel, I'll leave an affiliate link in the video description below. Or if you're looking to buy anything else from them, let me know and I can check to see if there are any coupon codes that might save you guys a few bucks. If this video was at all helpful to you or if you appreciate what I do, feel free to click the like or subscribe button as it really helps my channel a lot. Thanks for watching and as always I'll see you guys next time.